Hello mga friendships! Here we go again and we are still in Liverpool. But for today's vlog, we are in the Museum of Liverpool. The Museum of Liverpool in Liverpool, England tells the story of Liverpool and its people. It reflects the city's global significance. It opened in year 2011 as newest addition to the National Museums of Liverpool Group, replacing the former Museum of Liverpool Life. The museum is housed in a new purpose-built building on the Man Island site at the Pier Head. The museum was designed by architects and engineers Uru Hapo and built by Galliford Tri at cost of 72 million sterling pounds, provides 8,000 square meters of exhibition space, housing more than 6,000 objects. It has flexible spaces that regularly change to enable National Museums Liverpool to show more of their collections. It was open to the public on the 19th of June 2011. In January and February 2017, the museum was closed for two months for essential works. And on December 10 to 12, 2021, the museum hosted the G7 Summit of Foreign Ministers. So we are now inside the museum, among friendships. So the museum displays are divided into four main themes. The Great Port, the Global City, People's Republic, and Wondrous Place, located in four large gallery spaces. On the ground floor, in which we are at right now, displays look at the city's urban and technological evolution, both local and national, including the Industrial Revolution and the changes in the British Empire, and how these changes have impacted the city's economic development. As you can see, the boys or we are climbing the staircase and this staircase is centrally located, a spiral staircase within the museum. And we are now on the upper floor of the museums now on the upper floor looks at Liverpool's particular and strong identity through examining the social history of the city from settlement in the area from Neolithic times to the present day migration and the various communities and cultures which contribute to the city's diversity This museum's mga friendships also features Little Liverpool, a gallery for children under six, history detectives, an interactive archaeology and history resource center, a 180-seat theater for community and audio-visual performances and meeting facilities. It also has a gallery called City Soldiers, which tells the story of the King Regiment. In February of 2007, while the museum was under construction, steam locomotive Lion, star of the film The Tetfield Thunderbolt, was moved by road from Manchester, where it had been in on loan to Liverpool and eventually placed in the new museum. Uh, 
So we are now in the part of the museum called the Wondrous Place where I, uh, I was face to face with my namesake Glenda Jackson. So Glenda Jackson is an English actress and politician. She won uh, the Academy Awards for Best Actress twice. For both, uh, both awards were from a romantic comedy and one of that a movie was A Touch of Class. So yeah, so that's how Glenda Jackson looks like. So mga friendships, the exhibits from the entirety of National Museum's Liverpool's collections are used for the Museum of Liverpool's displays. They tell the story of the city through items from collections of costumes and decorative art, entomological and botanical collections and objects representing social and urban history as well as oral testimonies, archaeological material, and photographic archives. From September to November of 2012, the museum staged the Liverpool Love Exhibition in which well-known personalities such as Yoko Ono, Sir Peter Blake, and Noel Fielding celebrated the city of Liverpool. Right mga friendships, this part here, right outside the museum, is called the Royal Albert Dock. It is a complex of dock buildings and warehouses in Liverpool, England, designed by Jesse Hartley and Philip Hardwick. It was opened in 1846 and was the first structure in Britain to be built from cast iron, brick, and stone with no structural wood. As a result, it was the first non-combustible warehouse system in the world. It was known simply as the Albert Dock until 2018 when it was granted a royal charter and had the honorific royal added to its name. So it's, it's now called Royal Albert Dock. Mga friendships, at the time of its construction, the dock was considered to be revolutionary in its design because ships were loaded and unloaded directly from or to the warehouses. Two years after it opened, it was modified to feature the world's first hydraulic cranes. Due to its open yet secure design, the dock became a popular store for valuable cargoes such as brandy, cotton, tea, silk, tobacco, ivory, and sugar. However, despite its advantage design, the rapid development of shipping technology meant that within 50 years, larger and more open docks were required, although the Albert Dock remained a valuable store for cargo. Today, the Royal Albert Dock is the major tourist attraction in the city and the most visited multi-use attraction in the United Kingdom, outside London, of course. The docking complex and warehouses also comprise the largest single collection of Grade 1 listed buildings anywhere in the UK. So mga friendships, apart from this place being the popular tourist attraction, the Albert Dock or the Royal Albert Dock is also a foodie destination. Boasting an excellent array of restaurants and food options, despite this, the quite essentially British fish and chips shop 
was conspicuously absent for a very long time. So this fish and chip shop wasn't here before, but not anymore because they opened the duck plants, fish and chips. So um, you can drop by for some of the city's best fish and chips by the waterside. And it's the Ducklands Fish and Chips, the best in the world. That's what it says. <laughs> everything okay cash so my friendships what we like or love most about this fish and chips is that the butter was light and crisp and the chips were medium thick and very good the cod or the fish the cod fish was in nice thick flakes the peas weren't dyed so it was just you know a natural mushed piece or mushy piece that's just how we like it and an excellent meal in this tourist you know spot so you can always uh, drop by here when you happen to be in Liverpool Duck, Ducklands Fish and Chips So yes, my friendship, that's the Royal Albert Duck in Liverpool with the restaurants, cafes, bars, shopping centers, and museums. The vibrant heart of Liverpool's historic waterfront, the Albert Docks is the place to play, to see, to eat, to drink, and stay, blending the old and the new. So mga friendships, there is going to be an event on September. It's called Heritage on the Duck Returns to Albert Duck, Liverpool, this September. So they're going to celebrate the unique heritage of the Royal Albert Duck and Liverpool's world-famous UNESCO World Heritage Waterfront during Heritage on the Duck. It's a four-day event of free walks, talks, workshops, and live music. So friendships if you have nothing to do and you live nearby liverpool come and join the fun see ya